surprise of all the industries we surveyed, healthcare was the most negatively impacted by COVID-19. When asked about the part of their business that was most impacted, healthcare companies' top three responses were loss of net revenue, cancellation of appointments, uh, and a decrease in demand for services. Um, when healthcare organizations were asked which operating assumptions they plan on revisiting as a result of the pandemic, uh, almost 30% responded with staffing and recruiting, uh, followed by remote work and office setup. You know, outside of this survey, I've heard a lot of surveys uh, just in the market that uh, from a employee standpoint, they really enjoy this remote work availability. And I think uh, last survey I heard, 50% of the respondents said if that they weren't allowed to continue to work in some form or fashion remote, you know, they would cons you know, consider looking for other employment. And so these are big issues. But Andrew, from from uh, if you had any advice to give these healthcare organizations you know, as they look forward to the rest of this year and uh, 22 and after, what would what would some of that be with regard to these items? Thanks, Andrew. Uh I mean, this staffing issue is, I mean, it continues to, to bubble up as, as, as a top issue. And from an advice standpoint, I mean, I, I think you touched on it, but, you know, the Washington Post reported, I think, this week that, uh, you know, three in 10 healthcare workers are considering uh, or have considered leaving the profession, and 60% and have struggled with mental health issues. So, you know, for those that can't work remotely, uh, those essential workers, you know, I think that is, is going to be a top priority. Uh, agency nursing as a result is, is very hot. I think in, enhanced clinical resource management is top of mind for most of our hospital clients and this, the flexible staffing arrangements and, you know, the, uh, the remote workforce will continue. Um, you know, I think a lot of hospitals and health systems that, that continue to struggle with that physician service line uh, have, have uh, are starting to examine uh, if that full employment model, now that over 50% of the physicians are, are under a full employment model with a hospital or health system, if, if, if that's the appropriate model or arrangement, or if there's another hospital health system friendly type arrangement that can be reached, I think uh, some are starting to look there. I think preparing uh, for this pricing, the transparency issue, I noticed that we had a commercial on TV the other night that, uh, that dealt with an advocacy group that uh, is demanding that hospitals, you know, provide their uh, their pricing. So it, 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 I think it will be front of mind. I think it, it trying to educate the general public on healthcare finance is uh, <laughs> that's that's another that's another tall task. Um, but I think it will definitely be uh, front of mind. And then and then you know dealing with um, you know I think certainly the Democrats before. The Trump administration, Trump administration came in. Uh, Value-based contracting was uh, was a was a very hot issue. Uh, I think the Trump administration had that on the agenda, and I think they were going to continue that uh, that momentum. Um, but certainly today, I think uh, we had an awful lot of clients that that you know were involved in some sort of uh, value-based contract during uh, the pandemic, and it was nice getting that monthly check. Uh, as opposed to having to deal with, you know, absolute stoppage of cash flow. So um, I think, you know, this will come back to the forefront. I think, you know, I saw also last week that Optum, uh, Optum employs 59,000 uh, physicians and and they they pick value-based contracting as the number one issue uh, to uh, to enhance their, their overall uh, financial performance. So. Uh, you know, that in dealing with the uh, CMS changes that were issued in January from a coding and a work RVU uh, reallocation, I think uh, a lot of compensation modeling and a lot of pair contracting uh, opportunities are presenting. And so I think, you know, those come come to mind is uh, in talking to, you know, our wide array of, of clients. Thanks, Andrew. That's good information. Uh moving in a little different direction and kind of going back to the staffing and remote work environment and potentially having employees in you know, other states. Jamie, from a, a tax perspective, what are um, some things that healthcare organizations need to be thinking about in 21 and after? I think the biggest thing that comes to mind is on the, on the tax side of things is really um, 
you know, payroll taxes. If, if you have employees that have historically worked in, and lived in one state and are now living in another state but providing services back to kind of that home base state, um, does that create additional payroll tax filings and withholdings for you? Um, and then on, on top of that, if, if you do have payroll tax filings, is that then opening the company up to potentially having income tax exposure in those states where the remote workers are now living and working. Um, so it can get very complicated. Some of the states are, are coming on board and, and providing some guidance. Um, in most instances, they're not providing any guidance. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what position um, the states take and, and if they're going to take a hard position that says, absolutely, if you have a body in the state, you've got nexus and you have to file or if they're gonna be a little bit more lenient um, just given the, the economic factors of, of what we were living with during the pandemic. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Courtney, any thoughts um, from your client perspective? Yeah, I think just as far as remote, it's just a lot of processes have changed the way you know things are done with our clients. And so just making sure there's still good controls in place and that those are documented because technology is, you know, a lot more present and so just making sure that it's documented there I think is what what we're seeing.